Guys, there's a uh, huge trial going on, um, the uh, Oath Keepers trial, and I'm delighted to welcome to the podcast Ed Tarpley. Ed's a criminal defense attorney from Louisiana. He's practiced law there for 42 years. In fact, he served as the district attorney in Louisiana from 1991 to 1997. He's one of the attorneys on the team uh, representing uh, Stuart Rhodes. Stuart Rhodes, the founder uh, of the Oath Keepers. Uh, Ed, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me. A uh, lot going on, I know, in the courtroom, and thanks for taking the time to step out and uh, give us an update. How, in your assessment, is this trial going, and um, and where is it, at what stage are we at right now? Yeah, let me just say, first of all, that it's a pleasure to be on the podcast today. Uh, as you know, the local court rules prohibit me from discussing the evidence that's in the case, so we have to be careful not to uh, uh, run astray of, of violating the local court rules. But there are many things I can tell you. First of all, I can say that we think the trial is going well, uh, that we have an outstanding team of attorneys working on this case. Uh, I'm representing Stuart Rhodes along with uh, Bill Linder, with Phil Linder and uh, James Lee Bright from Dallas, Texas, two outstanding lawyers. Uh, we have uh, the other defendants. Uh, Kelly Meggs has uh, Stanley Woodward and Julie Haller from Washington, D.C. Uh, Kenneth Harrelson has uh, Brad Geyer from uh, New Jersey. Uh, uh, Je uh, Jessica Watkins has uh, Jonathan Chris from uh, Pennsylvania. And, uh, and Mr. Thomas Caldwell has uh, uh, Dave Fisher from Maryland. So we have a lot of outstanding attorneys on this case. And, and, and we have a great uh, uh, camaraderie and rapport with each other. So I just think we have an outstanding team in this trial on the on behalf of the defense. Let's talk about the um, the before we talk about the um, the evidence, uh, or at least specifically uh, Stuart Rhodes. Uh, let's talk about the concern that so many of us have that we are in an environment where there is intense political bias against these defendants. I mean, they're entitled to a jury of their peers. It's obviously the judge's job to make sure that that's the case. But we have an Obama judge, Amit Mehta. Uh, by and large, these judges have been very reluctant to say anything other than, yeah, we've been in D.C. a long time. These, you know, these jurors are wonderful. Uh, my question is, do you feel confident even with a D.C. jury and a kind of a progressive political establishment that you can get a fair trial? Well, that's a good question. And obviously, we won't know the answer to that until the trial is over. But let me just say this. We spent three days uh, selecting the jury two weeks ago. And uh, we went through a, an enormous amount of questions to the uh, potential jurors. Uh, the jury pool was a large pool. The judge called in many more potential jurors than normal. And, uh, and there were a lot of jurors, a lot of uh, individuals on the jury panel that were uh, excused because of cause. And so these were people who truthfully said, uh, I don't think I can uh, render a fair verdict. I don't think I can be fair in this situation. And, you know, all during that process, my prayer was that people would just tell the truth. If they were so convinced uh, uh, about, you know, their views of, of January 6th and, and what these defendants were involved in, that they could not be fair, would just tell the truth. And, you know, I, I think in large measure, uh, most of them did that. And so, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that we have a good jury. Uh, I'm an optimist by nature. And, and I'm just going to say that uh, I think that uh, the, the judge did a good job in this case. Uh, I mean, certainly, you know, there were decisions that he's made that we disagreed with. But overall, I, I'm hopeful that we have a good jury listening to the evidence in this case. Let's turn to the case itself. I'm actually looking here at an article. And of course, we have to remember that this is an article, by the way, by Glenn Kirshner. He's an MSNBC opinion uh, columnist, but he's evidently also an attorney. He goes, the evidence of guilt is remarkably strong. The defenses offered are just as weak. Um, he goes, rarely in my 30 years as a prosecutor have I seen a case with as much direct evidence of guilt as this trial. Now, I think what he's trying to say is that normally 
you can't in you can't know the state of mind or the motives of the people who are being charged you have to infer them from the circumstances of the case but he seems to say that in this case the prosecutors are introducing all this email traffic this back and forth uh, among these defendants and others showing that they had every intention of coming to Washington they saw themselves as a kind of a militia they wanted Trump to invoke the insurrectionary act they had some idea as even if he didn't. What do you make of uh, this kind of a claim? I realize it's outside the courtroom, but it's coming from someone who claims to be kind of in the know. Hey, we got these guys because after all, we've got them saying what they intended to do in their own words. Well, let me just say, first of all, Dinesh, that there are two sides to every story. And we have not had a chance to present our side of the evidence yet. And that will probably come in about a week, week and a half. And so we look forward to presenting all the evidence on behalf of Stuart Rhodes and the other four defendants in the case. And, and, and we feel confident that uh, once the, the defense lawyers and the defendants have had a chance to present their side of the story, that uh, people might take an entirely different view of what happened on January the 6th. But we'll have to wait and see how that works out, because, again, that's evidence that will have to be introduced in the court. And I can't really comment on that at this time. But uh, let me just say that. Uh, you know, uh, I've read some of the coverage of the trial and, uh, you know, having been in the trial for every single day, I'll have to say that I've wondered whether the people covering the trial are covering a different trial <laughs> because what we see in the trial is different than, than what's being reported. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm just going to say that, look, we, we look forward to putting on our case and, uh, and, and we look forward to the, the jury uh, rendering a verdict. Uh, you know, this is uh, not a sprint. This is a marathon. It's a very long trial. And so we'll just have to see what happens on each and every day. But at this stage of the game, I'll have to say I'm cautiously optimistic. Let's take a pause. We'll be back with Ed, um, Edward Tarpley, criminal defense attorney for Stuart Rhodes and the Oath Keepers trial. 